Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace and this is a Tower of Fantasy video. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about the upcoming, actually already live event, Road of Strife. And I said upcoming because I did wanna show you some footage of what you can expect for orienteering as well as doubles mega arena. And so yeah, I kinda wanna quickly talk about these three, how you can prepare for them. You can't really, <laughs> as well as probably the most important thing about the event, as well as every event, the event shop. I've done the calculations on all of these. I've taken like a prior stance on each of them and I want to talk a little bit about CN because um it's actually kind of interesting and so before we jump into the global version of the event Road of Strife I want to quickly talk about the comparisons to the CN version in that there isn't really any comparisons that can be made because if I highlight this over here you can't really see anything because it's in the background but the TLDR is that the acquisition method for this mechanical bird is kind of different to how we're getting it right now they actually had to go ahead and hunt some bosses for one of the particular pieces I believe the core. And so yeah, that's all I really wanted to say about this. It's that we are deviating pretty hard even to in terms of events from Tower of Fantasy CN. So you can't really expect it 100%, although we do have footage of some of the other stuff like the orienteering, the two player Megas Arena that I'm about to show you, etc, etc. So with that being said, let's park CN, let's forget about this and let's move on to global. So the first one I want to talk about is the gate one over here. You know what? I'm not going to even talk about it because you guys can go in game right now and just complete these. These are essentially interstellar gates. You go in, you clear them, you clear a boss, you get 300 of the star grits, do it four times and daily maximum 1200. That's it. Let's talk about the other stuff. The second event, which has not been unlocked yet is the orienteering. Now, orienteering is really, really interesting because um, it gets really, really crazy. I'll show you guys in a second. But the TLDR of orienteering is that you are essentially hitting each of these marks. You see that orange point over there. And then you're following these arrows to go to the next one. That's really it. And along the way, there are a couple of different things that can either help speed you up or like really just impede you, right? As you're doing your orienteering, you can see that there is a counter over here. Two out of 17, that just popped up to three out of 17 and you had 10 minutes to complete this. Now, the three out of 17, it just means each milestone that you've hit and we're about to hit a fourth one over here boom up pretty easy to understand right and so here we've got a ramp and we've got like the speed thing which actually propels you forward and then over here you can see that there are kind of like speed runes on the floor which will help you go a little bit faster and you don't have to stay within the arrows as you could see he actually does like jump off a cliff um i think for <laughs> min max purposes <laughs> but yeah that's the tldr and as you can see there were some red arrows which means that it would actually force you backwards you don't want to hit them and it does get a little bit harder like for example he actually falls off a cliff um yeah, but upon completion for this one, you actually get the currency, which is used to clear out that shop. So if I just skip to the end, you can see he got 1200 of the star grit. And so that my guys is orienteering. However, it is actually a little bit more harder than just that. It's actually a real shit fest. So let me show you guys this. It's actually really freaking funny because there are so many people running around in their own rides, right? And essentially where you get placed determines the amount of those star grits that you get. I think it's going to be okay. I think you'll be still be able to max out like 1200 per day. If you're going to be relying on the race, it might just be a little bit harder unless you're like a god with the maglevs. I don't know why there's like all the maglevs in the front. Maybe that's the OP mount. I don't know. But yes, again, this is the TLDR for the orienteering. Got a bunch of chickens running around. Now let's have a look at when he places and the rewards that he gets. And so this is the ending and he is going to get 600 of the star grit for coming six, which is actually not bad at all considering he took three minutes to complete that course. Now I'm pretty sure doing the Stargate and this one, you're getting like virtually identical value. So if you're like crap at this one, you can probably just go back to the Stargates. But to be honest, this one looks like a lot of fun. I'm gonna give my hand a shot at it. On the other hand, we have something called Mega Arena coming up. And so that's this picture over here. Here. And the TLDR, and shout out to Game Gucky for this footage, but it's essentially like a 2v2 mega doubles arena. As you can see, you get some sort of currency. It's a little bit of a different currency from ours because I believe they reran it. They reused the event format for something else. Actually, you know what? I take that back. They didn't even have this event format for getting the bird. But regardless, this is what it is going to look like. It is exactly what it looks like. It is arena. You got two people on your team and you got to go and beat up the other two people on their team. 
I'm not sure I can say much more about this. I do believe that the platforms actually do recede, same as your standard arena. Like you can see, I think a chunk has been taken out. But otherwise, my guys, it is exactly what it looks like. And upon completion, upon winning, I believe you get 400 from this one. I do think that the numbers are going to be different for our bird event. To be honest, if you want like the fastest way to complete the event, I would probably just recommend doing the Stargates every single day. But this is a little bit of variety to kind of just like spice up the gameplay, right? We can't just kind of grind mobs every day right and so with that my guys we've covered all of the different game modes that will be present now there are actually a whole bunch of other types of events that i could potentially go through let me know if you do want to see it down below in the comments however for now we're going to move over to the spreadsheet which is the shop priority now the event shop is kind of interesting because we actually do have an unlimited kind of unlimited resource that you can buy over and over which is the gold times 100 so for most of you who have played gacha games before when we have like excess currency or excess tokens you can just funnel it all into gold this is kind of like that however let's go through each of the materials first and then let's talk about priority and then we'll go through the calculations and see how much we should be spending thank you josh for the sub on the excess gold over here all right so let's move up over here red nucleus of course top priority the mech bird also top priority the joint supply chips which doubles the rates or like boosts your rates for when you actually open up those joint operation boxes that is certainly top priority and then down here it is going to be exactly the same thing the red nucleus mech bird and then the joint supply chips as top priority second in line i would say is going to be the sr relic shard box as well as the weapon augmentation box number two especially because we are passing level 100 in the weapons we are certainly going to be starved for these weapon augmentations then from here on out i would say that you can actually prioritize for yourself because different people are going to have different needs for example there are some people who like to level all of their weapons and so therefore your weapon battery is probably going to be a higher priority priority than others. For the vast majority of players, I'm going to say that these number threes, weapon battery, matrix data pack, We've got the crystal chunks over here and the crystals down here as well as the surprise gift box now i want to talk about the crystals because i think that the crystals could be bumped up to a two considering how hard it is to get the exp for your equipment and if you guys are not familiar with what these crystal chunks do essentially you can plus five plus ten plus fifteen your equipment but on the other hand you can actually star them up so for example purple gear can go up to four stars you use this crystal chunks or you can use dupe gear to put it into those stars and hopefully by end game you're going to have like like five star gold pieces using these crystal chunks. Currently, I would say that I am pretty starved of the crystal chunks out of everything else, as well as the matrix data packs. So those are gonna be my priorities. I would say they're kind of like a 2.5 for me. And on top of that, I don't know about you guys, but elemental or shard box, I just, I'm pretty sure I have like 200 of them and you can also farm them in the open world. That's gonna lead us to priority number five, which is weapon augmentation box one, which is essentially stuff that we pretty much are not going to use because we are way past the limit of using these weapon materials. However, if you are leveling a lot of weapons at the same time, I mean, yeah, I guess you could consider it. And so the only reason that I put a priority on it is because I'm scared. I'm scared of the daily limit cucking people. And if there are some days where you just can't log on, then this is the priority that I think you should follow. However, However, there is a little bit of leeway because of the excess. Now, the total cost of all of these items will cost you 14,200 of the currency. Scrolling down, we have 14 days for the event. We have 1,200 star grit limit every single day. That is going to bring us to 16,800 to actually spend. And then we have 14,200 to clear out the entire store, meaning that we have a deficit of 2600 or rather sorry it's actually a surplus we have a surplus of 2600 what this means is that generally speaking if you can't clear a couple of days i think about two days you should be fine any more than two you might miss out on something but then again remember some of these are so low priority that it realistically does not even matter now on the other hand say you are a min maxer and you're going to clear every single day you have 16800 you will see that there is a gold times 100 with a daily purchase limit of 200 and this is going to cost five and so what that means is that every day you can only spend 1000 of the tokens on the gold times 100 so in terms of the timeline it should be very very straightforward you'll clear all of these items in about like 11 to 12 days and then day 12 13 14 
you'd just be buying out the gold for those ones. Honestly, a pretty straightforward event. I think it's a little bit better than the implementation that they did on CN. And with that, that is going to bring us to the end of the video. And so it's my turn to ask you guys, are you guys excited for this freaking mechanical bird? Because I am. I am excited to paint it yellow and kind of ride it like a chocobo. Otherwise, if you guys think the bird is ugly, let me know down in the comments below and which mount you actually prefer over it. If this video was at all entertaining or helpful, then please consider leaving a like, subscribing to the channel and turning on that notification bell. However, as, uh, as my pseudo chocobo, mechanical chocobo once said, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.